What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Marketing Lot, a show dedicated to teaching the real and powerful marketing tactics directly from business leaders, using them right now to change lives and become more successful. My name is Brian Hatch, marketing automation expert and founder of Automate Big, sponsor of The Marketing Lot. I'm so excited for today's episode because we have an amazing guest who is spreading his goodness all over the world. Anthony Trucks is a serial entrepreneur with one serious superpower, a power to elevate how he operates in an identity level to navigate life shifts, good and bad, with grace and optimism to make success his second nature, which is why he created Identity Shift, a company focused on helping people close the identity gaps that are responsible for their shortcomings and potential and the lack of success. He teaches people to elevate how they operate and to level up their life and business. He helps people find out who they truly are and develop into who they want to be. It's time to learn how to make shift happen in your life. Anthony Trucks, welcome to the marketing lot. Hey, oh, how are you, man? Doing well. Good. It's, uh, it's true pleasure to have you here, man. I, I know you in, in many different re respects and, and have a lot of respect for you. So thank you for sharing some time with me today. Hey, man, no problem. Happy to, happy to come hang out with my boy, B. Brian, what's up, man? Good. <laughs> well, today's topic is as we want to dive in deep on, on, a, on single topics so we can help the listeners really gain traction in their business via marketing yeah. principles, right? And so the topic that we're going to be talking about today is shareable content. Mm -hmm. um, so give us an idea, like where, where does that fit into your business? Why is that so important to you? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a unique part of social media, which is that uh, everybody's posting content and it has to be good. And right now we're in the middle of all this, you know, crazy. So the way I look at it is this, is everybody in the most part, normal situation, not the, the crazy pandemic situation is there's different battlefields going on. There's a battlefield, you know, to be, uh, you know, at an event, there's battlefields for seminars, there's battlefields for masterminds. And then, you know, and, you know, actually at brick and mortar business, but right now everybody's in the same battlefield, we'll call it, which is this online space everyone's creating content. There's, there's probably like 70 more lives per day than I ever saw my, my Instagram lives popping up. Um, there's just, there's actual A-list stars on these things doing stuff, you know, talk show hosts operating from their home. So everybody is creating more content than ever. And so those of us who are already here who don't have the clout or the reach, like we're now having to, to figure out how do we cut through the noise and how do we get people to actually hear our message and hear what we're saying so we can potentially work with them, right? So the marketing is, it's the awareness. How do we get people to be aware of us? It's not advertising. It's not saying here's something by this. It's like, hey, I exist. And one of the best ways to do it is in my book is have shareable content. Social proof is huge. If somebody feels good to share this because it's funny or it makes them look cool, whatever it is, then you've got a W. The problem is a lot of people, they're, they're not clear on their message so that the message doesn't come across clear when they talk. And also they're, they're not able to create something that other people want to share, even if they don't know you personally. Well, that's, that, that is definitely one of the things that's interesting in our society. Like you said, it's, there's a lot of noise, right? Mm -hmm. But where, where did you gain the idea? I mean, yes, we recognize like in, in the marketing sphere, you got to have content that is shareable. Like I think that yep. concept isn't, too uh, mm -hmm. hard to understand or grasp, mm -mm. but where, where has that made a difference to you? I mean, as a starter, as where you are now, how has yeah. that really made a difference? Because mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't know, is every content out there that, that is like, is like, I mean, there, there are things like fail army and there are goofy things and yeah. funny posts. Are, are yeah. those doing the same kind of benefit? I, I think that your business does. So where, where did I think it depends? How do you come it there? depends on who you are. Yeah, I think it depends on. So for me, I am my brand, you know. And so if you're talking about someone, so yeah, you have stuff that that is out there that's almost like faceless. There's not a human name behind it. People see things, but I don't know exactly who made this video, where it came from, which we purposed. So for me, when I look at marketing, usually the people I'm talking to, you know, are people who are trying to sell something. They're trying to in some way market, then advertise it at same demographic. For me, like part of the thing is I want to have my content shareable so somebody sees my face and knows my face. So when they get an advertisement in front of them, there's a no like and trust, they'll click and they'll push on. It just makes it a warmer lead, a little bit of a warmer lead, right? But at the end of the day, it's like I also have a really big desire to impact people's lives. And I, I can't impact the life if it dies with every person that sees it because I didn't impact them enough to think that it was good enough to share on. And so what it tells me is the content wasn't good enough. And also, I'm not expanding the reach of my message. 
And so when I'm looking at things I can do to, to impact the world and make income, it's got to be shareable content, whether it's a video, a quote, a post. And there, there's, there's more you can do at a depth of thinking uh, that you can actually structure the piece of content that really will, you can almost predict like this is going to be something people would like to hear and see. And so from there, it's a matter of, of just structuring in a way that allows you to consistently go through a process to put things out. Because the problem is a lot of people think I just have to have my feed filled with things that are new. I got to post three times a day. I got to have this up there. Like, yeah, but if you post trash, like nobody, no one wants it. You know, like it's, it's kind of the thing is like your, your algorithm will push you down. You won't get seen. Then you'll wonder why, like, Hey, I'm so good at my thing. I do. How come I'm not growing this? Well, because you didn't do anything to get people to experience this. You didn't, you just got lazy over here and you started posting a couple of videos. You popped the camera up and yes, it's good to get it out there just to have something out there. But what if it was great stuff out there? Like what could that do to impact the lives you really want to impact in your own life? What could you do to impact your bank account that allows you to, to be able to not stress off money or paying rent or any kind of stuff where you can actually focus more on impacting lives in the long run. Awesome. Well, how, I mean, you've talked about like great content. Do you just, just seconds ago, uh, yeah. great and shareable content. How did you learn the difference between great content and not? Because I don't think yeah. the starter, the person that's brand new won't necessarily know, but how could you help them know? And how did you come to know? Yeah. So I came to know through trial and error. I saw a couple of things. When I first started in this industry, I was like, I want to first get good at, at taking any idea and making it a concept I can talk about. I want to get good at extemporaneous speaking, which is just talking off the cuff and be able to teach without having to like read a, a note card or speak without reading a note card. And so what I did is I did something called a nightly 90. And the nightly 90 was a 90 second video every single night. And I would travel the world. I was posting these from like <laughs> from the Philippines. I was posting them in like South Korea, Russia, all over the place. And, and what it was, was for 1,333 straight days, 3.6 years straight every day. I think I might've missed one day. Like it was a different time zone. It threw me off, but every day I would do it. And it was something where I realized after doing it, that I, I was just making content. It was cool, but I wasn't making great content. It wasn't very shareable. It wasn't very engaged. It wasn't a message where someone wanted to press it along. And so I was like, man, I'm doing all this busy work every day but it wasn't, it wasn't getting good. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to cut this. And I had the, the number 333 was a specific number. It's a whole different conversation. I've got to go there, but I cut it off at that level. I was like, I got to start focusing on creating stuff that is incredible that people like that they'll watch it. They'll share with their friends. Because when I did have that, when one of the pieces did get shared, it grew. Like right now I got a video we posted maybe a week and a half, maybe two weeks ago, I want to say, and we're like 4.1 million views and some like 50,000 shares right now. And we, we, it was like the first entrance into like creating a more cinematic, I call them mini movies, because I wanted to create something that was, that was a depth past what I was already doing, that just a singular message, singular thought uh, for a specific demographic and let it ride. And that alone has allowed me to be able to say, okay, great. Now I've got this many people seeing it. And it's, my wife was like, Anthony, okay, so you got that many views. What's that going to do for you? I was like, yeah, but think about how many more people now that there's a segment that, that work, could work with my business that now I've seen my face. So if I go and market to them later through an advertisement targeting the, those who engage with the video, I can now take that subset and market to them and actually be able to work with them more because they, they see me. They know who I am. They, there's a little more trust built up. Even if it's just enough trust, it'd be like, oh, I remember that face and click it to see, right? And so that for me has been like the idea of like, now I want to focus on that because as I do that, the business has grown. As my content's gotten cleaner, more precise, um, and I work through my, my framework of how I create and think through like topics and ideas and which direction I take them, that's why I make content that people are like, oh, this is cool, and they share it. Because really, those who have great communities, great followership, they have a message that someone can come across, not know you personally, but just like you and say, oh, that's cool, and share with their friend, like pass the torch along so if the friend can run with it. That's how you grow things. So if you want to grow your business, you have to grow the message. You can grow your message by having shareable content in the world. That's awesome. I want to highlight for those that are watching that that's, that's one of the main key benefits and results that, that shareable content provides is it provides you viewers, people that are interested in, in the topics, the things you're, you were just mentioning, but it gives them an opportunity to be introduced to you, right? Some people don't understand. They're like, well, why would I want to make, a, okay, I make a viral video or a good, I get, what would that do for me? And I think you've pointed that out really well is it gives 
you an opportunity to have the right people look and you might have the wrong people as far as your business, the objectives you want to advertise later for that, yeah. that they might not be care about you, but there will be percentage of them that do. And now you've got them started in the conversation, which is cool. Now, mm -hmm. one question I have for you though, is do you feel like you did the nightly 90 for a long time? Yeah. So my question to you is, do you feel like that can be shortcutted? That, that, do, do people need to go through the stages of like, shit, like creating a ton of content <laughs> that sucks or that is maybe not great? Or yeah. can they speed that up? Or what, what do you thought? What are your thoughts yeah, on that? Yeah, yeah, you can definitely, you know, here's the thing, whenever I, here's a couple of reasons why you can speed it up. One, I just did that to learn how to be able to take an idea and do something with it. And I wanted to get on stage and speak. Not everybody needs to get on stage and speak. Also, I, I didn't ever put a process behind it. I just, I just was just talking. And the problem with that, it's kind of like if you play park football with people who have a, a game plan, right? I don't care if you're Tom Brady. If you go out there against some, some team that has a playbook and you have no playbook playing park football, you will get murdered every time. The reason is like usually a small little windows, like in football, ball's hiked. I got like a two second turn, bump, dump it. I can get that first down, take off another defense. If it's park football, I'm waiting for everything to develop and I'm running around. I, I throw picks like it's horrible. So essentially not having any kind of strategy is the worst strategy. <laughs> and so for me, the one thing that I learned from all of it, like I did the work so people don't have to, is I went through and learned like, okay, here's what does work. Here's what doesn't say this up front. And with this, don't say this, don't take too long. Don't wander here. Energy level, like all these weird little things. And then also I would have content that would be, some of it would be decent videos. And the content's not always video, by the way. Like we're talking about like quotes, image, all this kind of stuff. But what it would be is like I learned a, a flow of how to be able to make an idea reach a certain person uh, and then be able to have that certain thing, like learn and, and like they could learn through it. But also it always wove back into my business concept. It always was, I could always tie it back to what I was doing. And it, it's a little bit of a mental gymnastics framework, but like when you get it down to a good flow, it's like, oh, I could do that off the top of my head right now. Like I can really can make one up and we can just do it right now. And if we know the demographic, you'll make it to it like, holy crap, that was great. I got to share with my people in this industry and they share, 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 but it's got to be valuable. The problem is just you talking about it, your problem or wandering or rambling. Nobody's listening to that because everybody's doing that. So like, I got to, I got to listen to this thing and be like, oh, wow, I didn't, that's so good. I got to pass to somebody or it was engaging or it was entertaining. Right. And so that's part of it. And if you can do that, then everything can roll the right way. But for me, the nightly 90 was something where I took <laughs> way too many years to figure out something that, that I could have learned quicker had I had a process in place. Yeah, I like that. I like that. And I like that you pointed out that, that there are many pieces of content. It's not just one style of content that you're creating no. that has to be a video, right? Um, how do you feel like in your perspective with shareable content, how that would apply to a business that's not like a speaker or a trainer or getting on stages. What, yeah. what, could, what could that do for them that, you know, some people that are listening in right now that don't yeah. have like any intention to speak on stages or share their message that way. Yeah. How would that apply? I mean, it's like saying, what about Coca-Cola or asking about a, a wonderful nuts company that you know, sells potassium. Every, every company needs brand awareness. And how do you get awareness? Everything's content. A commercial on the internet or on, on TV is, is content. Essentially, if you have any place where you are trying to do something, uh, to create something for the world that they would give you money to be able to exchange for this thing, you have to be able to create shareable content. Because when you get to the point of your brand leads out, after a while, you don't even need the same kind. You just need one or two. Or someone using your thing becomes the, the content, right? Think about it. When was the last time you saw a Ferrari commercial on TV? Never, right? Like yeah, it's, yeah. it's just, it's, it's brand awareness. People see it because everybody's online posting them in their cars and sharing it. Like, so the, the content after a while doesn't even have to be curated by you, but you know, you could have like your Geico's. Geico has weird, stupid beavers and ducks running around, right? But it's, it's cool, engaging, funny content that just keeps you top of mind so that when you do get the call or the marketing, like, oh, like, yeah, yeah, it's the company that does those commercials. I know who they are, right? That's all it is. So even if you don't do coaching or speaking, that's why the content can be different type. It could be like content where you're not even the one in there. You could hire people to, to talk through stuff. You can get images made and put a cool, you know, a copy caption on there that engages a specific person that takes them through a story that resonates with them. I mean, it's just, it's a plethora of ways, but if your focus is just to make content, just to do it, it's just going to be like a, like a bunch of newspapers that nobody wants to read. Like, oh, that's cool. 
But then after you make those those pieces that are engaging, people like they want to frame them and put them on the wall because it's just great stuff. You got to be focused on that, not just making stuff because, well, the Internet says you have to make two posts a day. That's just a waste of everybody's time, both you making it and somebody having to scroll past it. I love it. So then what 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 is the formula then? If, you, if you're willing to share, what is the formula to make shareable content then? Because yeah. I, I still don't think we've really hit that at this level. Oh, we we understand how important it is, but how do you yeah. do it? I'll, I'll, I have a framework for it, man. I have an actual process. This is something that I, I made because I need to figure out how to be able to walk my team through my brain of how I do stuff. Uh, and so essentially you have like a baseline level. The first thing is you got to know your demographic. Like this is, if you don't know this, go figure it out. I mean, I, you can't really market by making stuff. You can't be marketing to bikers with like, you know, hey, we're going to use the color pink and, and a bunch of flowers. Like you got to know your demographic, right? So know who they are. Um, once you get a filter who they are, I walk people through a process called a waffle. I'm giving you all my stuff right now too. So take this, run with this. This is, this right, is good right. stuff here. So the waffle is, is, uh, is something that I created. Just it's an acronym, but it's every night. What I do is I, I take, you know, this waffle and I, I take one point and add to one area of each of these letters. The W stands for wants. What does my demographic want right now? <clears throat> Aspirations is the A. What does my demographic want later? Fears. What is my demographic afraid of in the future? Frustrations. What is my demographic frustrated with right now? Right. What are they not like? What are my demographics? Lateral loves is the L. Lateral loves that they have. Like maybe there are people who are pilots, but they also happen to like a certain whiskey. I don't know. You could talk about that in content. Um, and then you have the expectations. Expectations are of themselves, of the world, and of other solutions that are similar to yours. What are expectations they have? So every night I, I have as a reminder, my phone that pops up at seven. It says, hey, fill the waffle out. So I go through and I think of one thing from the day for each of those areas. It could have been a conversation. It could have been something I read, an email. And I load one in. What was, what's something my demographics wanted they say, right? What's one of the things my demographics said they, they aspired to that day? What's a fear I heard? What's a frustration I dealt with? Um, it could be myself. If I'm, the, if I'm the person, like it could be something I dealt with. What are lateral loves I saw? Maybe there's a, com a commercial I saw or a book that people seem to read or another, another artist that they happen to listen to, whatever it is, fill that out. Now what I do is I have these topics and these topics are what I would create content from. But most of the time people have no idea how to, uh, how to create from that post. It's like, okay, I'm the, I heard my demographic said that an aspiration they have is they want to, uh, they, they want to be able to uh, throw something out. You throw something out. Let's, let's weave through this together. What's something that you can think of a demographic? What do they want? They want, they want to work from home. They want more freedom. There you go. Beautiful. All right. So they have an aspiration to have more, we'll say more freedom. We'll say work from home. It's a little more freedom, more broad. I'll say work from home is the aspiration, right? And who's our demographic? Let's say demographic is uh, a person who has uh, aspirations of, I don't know, maybe they're just a person that, that's a secretary. They just want to work from home, right? Just say that. I'm a secretary. I want to work from home. Now what I do is I take it to whatever my company does. The next level is I know, I know my demographic is. I know what they want to do. I got to go through the foundational framework of my company. Like what are the things that comprise the base of my company. For example, we usually have process frameworks, but then we also have like a foundational framework. So process framework in fitness, for example, could be like P90X or insanity. But the foundation of what they work on or focus on is going to be nutrition, training, and recovery. And I mean, like there's going to be the foundations, but the process framework's a little bit different. So your company needs to have some kind of foundation. Like for you, I'm sure you guys have a process, right? But your foundation for what you do marketing wise is probably going to be like, I don't know, maybe it's, it's automations. That's the thing. It's automations. You know, let's just say it's, it's tracking and tweaking. I don't know. I'm just making something up, right? Mm -hmm. There's a foundation of what you guys do outside the process. So once you know your demographic, you run somebody through one of the areas of your company's foundational framework. So for me, I have a, a process framework, but I have six areas that are the foundation of identity. So I have the base of mine's going to be beliefs, actions, thoughts, mindsets, habits, and ego. So what I would do is I would take it through one of those. I would say this, let's, let's take them through that mind framework. So this woman, she's a secretary, wants to be at home, and she's aspiring to you know, work at home. And I'm going to work her through one of these areas. Let's, let's say I'm going to work her through the, the lane of belief. Let's just say beliefs to be the one, the one area I'm going to work her through. So now that I got that, now I'm going to take it to the next tier of what the three core areas that everybody are really looking to buy stuff in the world. And it's going to be wealth, health, and relationships. So what it boils down to, people want to buy things that make them have more money, feel better, or help the relationships in some way. So if I say I'm going to take her through, I want to work at home, we're going to go focus on belief. 
then I'm going to work through the next tier. Let's say we're going to do this for, uh, you choose, health, wealth, relationship. What do you want it to be? Uh, relationship. Relationship. Boom. Done. Right. So we're going to say relationship is the focus point. Now I go to the next tier and say, okay, great. What's my company's main core focus, right? So what's the, what's not the mission, but what's our core focus for me? It's I want to help people operate at a higher level. Talked about in the beginning, yep. elevate how they operate, upgrade how they operate. That's my core thing for you guys help make more money or, or you know, have more automations, more free time, whatever it is for me. I want to take her through the aspect of, of operating at a higher level. Now my focus is our life and business. It's not life business, you know, driving your car faster, flying a plane. It's just life and business. So I'm going to take her through the aspect, which is say, um, you, life, we'll call it life. We're going to focus on the life because relationships are more in line there. Yep. And the last thing I want to do is I want to work it towards the mission, the company's mission. I'm going to close and have the dialed in direction toward the mission. For us, it's help people reach their full potential. That's what we want to do. I want to, I want to have people in this world reach that next tier potential. If you love my personal story, which Brian does, I'm just trying to reach that next level of what I'm supposed to, man, whatever that is. That's what we do. Now what I do is I go back and say, okay, great. This all sounds good, Brian. You're probably like, bro, I don't know where you're going to land this plane. B, I got you. Watch this. Now I work it through a process of delivery. This is what I learned through the, the, the nightly 90s, to deliver the content in a way that is poignant and it works. And I created something called Thimble. Because you know a Thimble used to like you push you, like the needle back in the day. Like I want to push people in a direction, right? I want to push them to share my stuff. Hence the Thimble. So Thimble is this. The T stands for the topic. I want to share the topic. Open up the video with the topic or an opinion. T. The H is, hey, my name is, right? So you share who you are. Hey, it's Anthony Trucks, founder of Identity Shift. The hey. The next one is the I. Hey, the information I'm about to share with you today is, tell them what you're going to tell them, right? Da -da -da -da. The M, if you do it, it'll make this happen. So if you do what I teach you, it'll make da -da 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 happen, right? Now the B stands for brain dump. I'm going to just teach you what I got to teach you. Now, when you go into this, usually you teach the what and the why, but not the how. I'm going to teach you one, two steps, three steps, do this, a process, whatever it is. The L is usually the last piece, but it's the opening of a loop. Hey, last but not least, you really got to do da-da-da. So they go, oh, wow, what's that? Open the loop. And then the E is, and if you want extra help with that, extra E, you can reach out to me here, go to this link, da -da -da, whatever you want to do. Now, when you're first starting out, I say do all of Thimble. After you have some, some flow going, take out the, the H, take out the E. So it's T-I-M-B-L, right? Because then it's like topic information makes us happen, um, brain dump. Uh, here's the last and not least, do this. All right, have a good day, go take off. Because they'll know to reach out after a while. You don't want to be the guy, hey, I'm so-and-so, take this action, right? So here's how I put this all together. We use the, the Thimble process. You have to create your own like process. You should at some point go through, hey, what's the, what's the thing I'm going to do to help somebody be able to stay at home, right? That's really what you're figuring out. Should I could just stay at home? So here's what I would do. I open with a T, the topic. Let's have the first opening line out to my board over here. I use it all the time. The T is gonna be like, um, you should be able to work at home as a secretary. I got her, I hooked her in, right? If you take what I'm about to tell you, it's gonna be able to make the, the reality of you working from home amazing. And now at the end of the day, I know you may be struggling, but I'm gonna talk to you about how the, the belief in yourself can make that take place. And how, and then the belief in yourself can actually make your relationships in your life incredibly amazing to where you can operate the highest level in your life and be able to reach your full potential. So here's what you wanted to do. Um, I, could, I could even say, my name's Anthony, but I took the I'm Anthony out of there, obviously. When I go into it, step one you have to do is you have to be able to have this clear cut picture of how you're going to go home and operate and flow. So you have to have a schedule, a structure, and keep to it. Two, you have to make sure you have a process of checking with your bosses so that they know you're actually still doing the work at home because if you're not doing it, at the end of the day, they're not going to have you be there very long. And then last but not least, what you have to make sure you're doing is always seeking to get better because you don't want to be the just the, the, the lowly secretary that's operating from home. Like, yeah, it's going to be good because you're close to your wife or close to your husband, close to your kids, close to whatever. And the relationships are amazing. But really, we're trying to learn to operate because just like you, I know there's something more for your life. If you want to reach that next level, you have to focus on what can I do to be better and move past this tier. Now, if you want to be there, great, but there's always going to be something that you want. And as humans, it's totally okay. So if you need some extra help with this, reach out to me and I'll show you how to be able to find that next level of your life so you can reach your full potential. So like that, that's one piece that in and of itself, like if I taught something that's powerful in that little section, it's like, oh, that's cool. If I take off the, the extra help, make it last, but at least do this and open a loop. Again, if I made that that section, that's the, the brain dump. If it's like, oh, that's great. That's cool. That's cool. Oh, man, I got to pass it to my friend who's also a secretary. 
now I've got something to flow with. Now, this takes practice. <laughs> this is not a simple one. But if you work people through this process of, of really flowing through a filter, now think about it. Everything I talk about is going to be to a demographic, to a problem or an aspiration or fear or frustration they have, the waffle. It's going to weave through one of the foundational segments of my company. I know that's an important piece for the people I work with. It'll focus on health, wealth, relationships, what they actually want. It'll tie to the company's main goal and the mission, and it'll be shareable because it's like, oh, this guy, or this girl just taught me something really, really cool. I got to get this out to the world too. Mm-hmm. And you roll. And then you could, you could take it any direction you want. We could have wove that from belief to could have been your mindset. It could have been the actions you take. I mean, those are the six I use. It can just go anywhere. You see what I'm saying? So like yeah. I can take one thought and spread it out into a whole bunch of different content and it makes it much easier for someone to create something cool. What's interesting is when, when I was going through that listening and trying to like be there as if I was one listening, I was a secretary, right? Yeah. The thoughts that come to mind from my profession, right? Is that it's, it's almost like a, I mean this to be very positive, a sales conversation that you're trying to create for the masses. I mean, not, yeah. and, and, and that doesn't, that shouldn't be negative to anybody that's listening to this. No. Is that, that like it's, you're making an intimate conversation with this person and you're creating content with that in mind. So that when, when it gets shared by multiple people, it actually makes sense. And it feels like it's a conversation as opposed to it being like, like that's the thing that's amazing. It's like the content needs to be individual, but yeah. it has to be shareable by millions. Right. Like yeah. otherwise it, you, you know, get yeah, tell their story. Yeah. That's really what it boils down to is tell their story through your filter. So yeah. if I know this person's aspirations, obviously when I teach them, I'm going to talk about something that I know is part of their story. So their brain them's part of their story. When I talk about the information or what's going to make happen for them, I know it's going to be some of value to them, right? So when I'm looking at the, the aspiration they're going towards, I'm making sure that is what leads in for the information I talk about, what it's going to make happen. Because I say it's going to make it to where you can, you know, uh, I don't know, go buy a Ferrari. Like that's not real. It's not going to make that happen for their life, you know? But if it's like, it's going to make it better for your relationship, we talked about, um, because you'll be home more often, like how you weave it in. It's like, oh, wow, that's you, that's useful for me. And so I do yeah. want to have it go out there. And this is obviously talking about shareable content that's not like kittens that people like, look at this cute kitten. Because yeah. the hard part is how do I get my stuff through you to your friends that are like you? And a lot of that comes with, is this information something that gets in the, the mental story already in my head? And that's where I run into this filter because now it's like I'm, I'm dialing it all back. And it takes some creativity, obviously, but now I'm dialing it all back to a place where this person's like, wow, this person, they get me. And I like this. And I want this to go to other person because the other person has the exact same career I do or feeling I do. I got to give it to them too. Yeah. Well, I'd like to point out a couple of things that I, that I, at least I take in from hearing your framework is that there's, there's no question in my mind that people that are sharing content that is actually shared by, you know, thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of people, it's very intentional, right? Very. And, and the people that are listening to this, like you and me talk about this, might, might feel like, oh, wow, that's a, like, I got to learn Thimble. I got to learn all these acronyms and I got to figure this stuff out. But I, I don't want to freak people out. I want to like help them understand that there is a process to making it work. You can't, you can't just jump willy nilly into something expect. Now I'm not saying that someone that like gets lucky every once in a while and something gets, oh, yeah, happens. yeah, but, but there, for those that do it consistently, it's, it's one hit wonders are no problem, but yeah. no, I mean, considerably, but those that are doing consistently, there is a process to it. And if you learn that process, that's how you can kind of shortcut this process than needing to, do three years of daily posts and, and figure out how to make shareable content. Yeah, that's what this all came from, man. Years of doing this stuff. None. It's all still on YouTube, right? And it's yeah. kind of like it's going to take some frustration to learn to ride the bike. But after a while, you learn you ride the bike without thinking about it. I can walk you through this in a million ways and never even like break a sweat because I did it for so long. And for a lot of people, like you have a process I never had. Like the process I'm giving people now, this is from me doing it, unpacking it, learning it, applying it over the last couple of years myself. And now I'm like, oh yeah, that's what works. And that's how I get people to engage and it grows and it flows and the business grows and everything's, it's amazing. And it's like, I don't, I don't have to stress off of whether or not this piece of content's going to work. It, it almost, if I've listened to my people, the original idea that came from the waffle already is a piece that hits them. 
most people like they don't even they don't have enough time in the moment of creating content like they'll set aside an hour or i'm gonna make some some posts this in this hour and you hop into that hour you're forcing your brain to come up with stuff that that needs to be very intimate you don't have there's no way to do it you just your brain won't go to that many places but for me because i do it every night I'm already in an intimate space. So when I go and make that bullet point note, when I revisit it during content review time before we film or I create posts, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I remember that conversation or I remember how that, so I'm, I'm, all, I'm doing the, the work way beforehand and I'm very, very close to where the, the problems are. So when I tell stories or I talk about stuff in content, it hits because people are like, oh yeah, and it hits all the time. And so when you, when you can get to that level because you just spent time, if people take nothing away and just do the waffle, if you just do just the waffle right now, in and of itself, that will be a huge change for people's content. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. That's really, really useful. And I hope that people will write those down, find ways to interact with Anthony Trucks, guys. The, the, he knows he's talking about. He's not doing this just because it was a good idea. He's learned yeah. from the process. So I think that's great. The one, one last question that I think is really interesting because everybody's at different walks of life. And, I, and, mm -hmm. and what I share personally um, is that, someone that has millions of followers versus someone that has, you know, a thousand followers. There's a, there's a vast variety of eyeballs and human beings that are looking at yeah. the content. So my question to you is with, I mean, you, you have, you have no small list. You, you have lots of people that look and pay attention to what you say and what you do. Mm -hmm. What would you say for a person that has less, that has a couple thousand, maybe has 10,000 followers, yeah. how could they use this principle even that they don't have as many, many, many followers. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could, as long as you, the interesting thing is I don't think followers will depict how good your content is. You know, it'll just, the, the growth of the followers and the pace will depict how good it is, honestly. And, and everybody's such different places. And nowadays with so many different like people out there in the world doing stuff, it's harder and harder to grow. It was way easier when most of these platforms come out because you got more reach. And so the, the big thing is there's other strategic places you can place your content to grow, obviously. But the algorithm for social media, they want people on these platforms. They do. So they make money through ads. So in order for them to be you know, able to have that take place, they need to put stuff in front of people that's good. So if you create something good and people like it and engage with it, I mean, you can do engagement stuff. You can do shareable um, things that have like certain posts and comment and ask questions. But if you create this thing that people engage with, well, now what happens is people will then put it out and the social media platforms algorithm pushes it up also because now they want that to be in front of people. Like, so it, more people will see your stuff. So if you have small followers, the, the best that you can do is this. If you have a low follower base, you've got to do this because if you're not, you're, you're never going to grow it and the algorithm is never going to push your stuff to the top because you have less people liking it. So the algorithm has less points of reference to say this should go to the top. So as you're growing, you, of all people, you can't be willy nilly. When you got, you know, a base of say, you have a, you know, I have 200 and something thousand people on like Facebook, I can get away with a post that's not the greatest video, it's still gonna get, you know, 10,000 likes or something we'll say. But somebody else only has 10,000 followers, you're not gonna get that amount of likes to push it up. So you've got to get focused on being very clear of who you're talking to, what they're thinking about, what's going on privately that they don't have conversations about. And if you don't, if you have clients, Listen to the client's problems. Listen to what they say and what they don't say. Like, listen, um, hear what they say explicitly and implicitly. Go and look at people that are doing what you want to do, that have clients like you want to have. Go and read the comments. Go and watch the posts they do. Try to pull out. And if you don't want to make a, like a, an idea from something, which you also could do, get re, watch a piece of content or read a, a, read a piece, video or a, a, a post or a caption and think, do I, do I disagree or do I agree? Uh, and what can I add? So if I, if I take this person's post and say, I disagree with it, you can reference it. Like I watched, I read this post the other day and it said, da, 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 but I disagree and here's why. And then there you have a piece of content you can create. Or, you know, I read this, I agree, here's why, right? Why you agree. Or I read this, but they missed out on this. This is also should be added. And then add that portion, here's why. So even if you can't think of anything and you have nobody you know, boom, go and grab some of the stuff that you do know is in your demographic and expand upon what they already created. They did some of the work for you, so expand upon it. And now you got some cool stuff too. What a great idea. You shared so much with us. Trucks, thank you so much for being here. And so I ask in closing, is there anything else you'd like to say or share on this topic or anything else that, that really uh, calls to you at this time? 
calls to me at this moment, man, no, nah, I think this is enough for people's brains to do something with. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, it's, it's something where people will separate and say, oh yeah, but I can't talk like that guy or I can't, I can't do what he did. And, and that, that to be totally honest, like when I started this, I was not this guy. That was, that was a thing is I had to lean in and just take the lumps. I think some people are hoping to get good at video or get good at content um, before they, they do content. Like it doesn't work that way. You kind of have to do the thing, figure it out, walk through it. But here's the cool thing. Uh, the internet forgets fast. So if you make something and it sucks, like it's okay. <laughs> the only thing no one's going to remember it next week or whatever it is. But I always look at like, who am I going to work with or need to work with a year from now? And am I going to be the person doing the work to build up to that to where when they find me, I've taken a lump so I can take that person on and help them or my person that avoided everything the longest time. And that person now is, is going to be unable to accept the gift of me. So I tell people all the time, like do the work so you, you don't rob the world of the gift of you. That's awesome. Dude, thank you so much again for, for being here. And, and uh, in closing, I just want to share that social media and, and obviously sharing content and get content that is shareable is a long-term game. Uh, you have to be committed to it. And as Anthony has, has shown us here, the rewards are endless. I mean, when you have a follower base that's listening to you, learning from you and, and actually coming back to you time and time because your content is shareable, it, it makes it so much easier for the next thing that you do, for the next thing that you do in your business. And so mm -hmm. note that there, there, we've shared a lot. There's a lot of frameworks to kind of look through. And I, and I do invite you to go check out Anthony Trucks on his website and all of the stuff that he shares. He does phenomenal work. But I think that if you will take this to heart and know that you might not do it perfectly, but if you learn from people that know, like Anthony, you won't have to beat your head against the wall for three years straight figuring it out. I, I, I love being here. Thank you again, Anthony, for being with us. And uh, that's today's episode of The Marketing Lot. I hope you enjoyed that episode of The Marketing Lot and that you will use the tactics to be able to improve your business today. Now, just for staying to the end, I have a special free gift for you that is my ultimate guide to your honest message. It's a program that I created to help business owners really dial in who they're speaking to. If you don't understand your audience, if you don't understand who they are, or how they operate, or what's going on in their lives, then it's very, very hard to market to them. In addition, if you don't know what to say and how to say it to them, that's also very difficult. So you go through this course and you'll learn how to talk to your audience the right way and get your message across. So it is a $97 program, which you're getting absolutely free just for watching this episode of The Marketing Lot. So go ahead and use the promo code on this page and you can get the ultimate guide to your audience and message free of charge today. Thank you for participating. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode.